Hey y'all, it's Kiara Wee, and we are back with another episode of Legend of Zelda <laughs> Skyward Sword. So, in the last episode, we saved. Saved? We helped Pippin and Crane get together and be such a lovey dovey couple, and so in this. And of course, we tried to progress the plot a little bit. But um, in this episode, we're really going to actually progress the plot. Um, what we're aiming to do right now is to get this light to, or the, f the windmill to shine at the uh, light tower. And once it starts, darn you. Um, well, we'll wait for another rotation. Once it, um, if you look at the bottom of the top half that's spinning, you'll see that there's like a little indentation. And you're trying to line that up with the little mossy indentation at the bottom of the part that's not moving. I know that's not very, very descriptive, but, um, just once you start getting it near there, just start blowing the gust bellows very slowly. So I think that should do it, because I believe it's lit. Yeah, it's lit. So, um, gosh, I haven't played for a while. I was expecting Link to roll when I hit the A button. Because <laughs> I've um, been playing a little bit of the older games. And it confused me for a moment. So the other thing that we're going to try to do is get the other light power to line up. Um, and I had this figured out way before the game even required you to. I thought it was just like a special side quest. I didn't realize it was required. I couldn't do anything about it because of this. Oh! Thanks so much for tracking down Kiel, Link. It's such a gorgeous day, da <laughs> day today, too. On a day like today, there's nothing I'd love more than to head over to the Lumpy Pumpkin and sip some of the soup. But of course my wife asked me to fix the cupboard, so I'm not going anywhere. Sigh. The story of my life. He said sigh. <laughs> um, and then you come over hey. here. What's up, Link? So, you're curious about that windmill, eh? Pretty smart design, I gotta say. You see, you can turn the windmill so that it can always catch the wind no matter what way it's blowing. But, well, there used to be this little propeller attached to the windmill so you could turn it. The thing flew off ages ago. It must have dropped down off the edge, down beneath the clouds. So, that's my strange elvish slash gruesome impression. <laughs> the windmill's been uselessly sitting there ever since. Thank you very much. I highly suggest you retrieve the windmill propeller from the land below to reorient the windmill. You want to know if I could fix that windmill you brought? Or, fix the windmill if you brought back the propeller? Well, if I had the propeller, then I could probably rig something together to get back on there, sure. Dun dun dun. How would you even go looking for a propeller in the first place? Once something falls out in the clouds, it's gone for good. Dot dot dot. Hang on. Come to think of it, Gondo at the scrap shop told me that someone in his family once used a flying robot to haul junk back from beneath the clouds. But we're talking about a tale that's been passed down over a lot of years, so I wouldn't put much stock in it. Um, and that. I just realized that that um, cutscene would have you believe that the um, propeller is in uh, Faron Province. I'm sorry, I'm going to try and say um less. I noticed that in editing. However, the propeller is actually in um, El. I said um again! The propeller is in Elden, and we are going to. We have seen it. And now we are going to go talk to Scrap Shop owner to get to one of my favorite themes in the game! Which I didn't realize was over. 
loops. Guess I'm out of the loop. Uh, hang on. I'm good. Okay. So let's talk to you. Hey! hey! Kid, what's up? You look like you need to get something off your chest. I think I know what it is. You got a favorite asking me, right? Yes. Huh? It's about this old robot my grandpa used to tinker around with. He probably just came here to make fun of the crazy junk guy for believing his grandpa's stupid stories, right? Well, get in line. I've heard it before. Wait, that that's not why you're here? You say you need to pick up something from below the clouds with this robot? Do you know what that means? That means you believe my grandpa's stories too, don't you? Well, I'm happy to hear that someone else believes me, but I don't think I can help you. You see, my grandpa's old robot... What? What's it called again? Oh, hey, that's right, I remember! His name is Scrapper! He may not be much to look at these days, but he was an amazing robot once. When you called him, he would go anywhere and haul anything. Sadly, as you can see now, he's just another busted old hunk of junk. <laughs> but old Gramps did tell me this. You can get him working again with the extract of an ancient flower. An ancient flower! It's like oil to the sky. But I never heard of... But I've never even heard of it, much less seen any such thing. Take mine! Ooh. What? You have one? Are you kidding me? That's amazing! <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. Ooh. <laughs> so this is an ancient flower. I can feel some slick lily stuff coming out from its stem. Great! With this, we can fix Scrapper! Wait right here! I'll have him up and running in no time. Click, 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 burp, burp, burp. Yeah, I know. Um. <laughs> phew! There you go! Thank you, brother! I got a full tank of energy and I am ready to carry anything! Huh? Who's a spring clad individual of small stature? Whoa! It talked! Can you believe that? Well, I guess I really did fix him! This kid gave me the materials I needed to fix you. Go on, say thank you! Hmm, are you sure it was him? Well then, I extend my reluctant thanks to you in a gesture of obligatory gratitude. Hey now, watch it. That's no way to talk to someone who just saved your life. Anyway, this kid wants you to haul some stuff around, and you're going to help him. This individual I have may have restored my operations, but I am not inclined to offer assistance. Serving children is very low in my task priority. <laughs> Master Link, materials from the windmill have yielded a signal that you may search for with your dowsing ability. Use it to locate the fallen propeller. Bump ba da da! However, it will not be possible to carry the item in your pouch and return to the sky. Who are you? <laughs> your name is Fee. Should I call you Mr. Fee? Are you looking for something, Mr. Fee? I, I understand. At your request, I will carry anything, regardless of weight or destination. Is it? Dot, dot, dot. Master, we have now means to bring the propeller back to Skyloft. You may immediately begin your search for the windmill propeller. Master Short Pants, I offer you assistance. I can now detect Fee, Mr. Fee's thought waves. Should you need me, ask Mr. Fee to call me, and I will arrive with haste. Bzzzat. So 
how do you plan to recover all the stuff that fell beneath the clouds? Y you know, you could always ask the fortune teller over there. I know he's kind of goofy looking, but when it comes to finding things, he's always right on the money. Now, he here's a couple things. Don't insult me by telling me to go see the fortune teller, and don't insult me with the dowsing ability. No, I don't want to talk to you. I don't want to talk to you. No, I don't want to talk to you. I don't need you. No. Go away. Now, see, I thought this guy was a, um, woman at first. Until I saw the mustache. Yeah. Actually, we're going to go out this way. Um, oh, also, there's another shield that we can get. Can we afford it, though? Uh, yeah, I know, I'm skipping his dialogue, I usually don't. My bad. Uh, yeah, we can afford it. Um, I will go ahead and get that. Oh, crap, my pouch is full. Um, so we're actually going to go to item check then, and the reason I'm going to keep this in the recording instead of just cutting it out is this. Hello, and welcome to the item check. Want to put your stuff in your pouch into storage? Okay. Want to take something out of storage? That's fine. So is there anything in your pouch or in storage that you want to move? Yes. And I'll explain this later. Alright, let's see it. Alright, so we will move the... Um, I mean, it really doesn't matter. I'm just going to move both because now that we're getting the sacred shield neither are really beneficial unless like it somehow if I broke it so we'll finish that but I'm going to hold on to them because I will make sure to get all upgrades by the end of the game it's just you don't have to that's the thing but I'm just going to do it because it's a let's play Ah, that's the sacred shield, as you might surmise from its name. It can handle a variety of attacks. Fire, not a sweat. Electricity, no painful saps. Plus, it will automatically repair itself when it sustains damage. It's a little bit fragile, but it shouldn't be a problem for one as talented as agile as yourself. At a cost of 500 rupees, it's an investment, but an excellent one care to buy it. Okay. And I don't remember if that was actually the voice I used for it before, but I feel like it's fitting given, um, I said um again, <laughs> given what he acts like towards the end of the game, and we will see that towards the end of the game. Ah, thank you for your loyal and continued patronage, friend. I've taken the liberty of placing your purchases in your pouch, or purchase, yeah. Uh, and actually it's not something necessarily that towards the end of the game is how he acts, it's more... Just how he acts at night. He's a completely different person. I've probably mentioned that already, but eh, it's worth mentioning again. Now, with the item check girl, that actually begins a uh, new side quest for us. Uh, that's going to be a continuous one. We're going to have to go back and talk to her. And every time she changes her attitude, which yes, She's going to change. I'm not going to say how. I'm sure you guys know by now how, but... Eh, I'm just not going to say in case you haven't played the game. But her attitude changes. Yeah, it, it's interesting. Uh, could you go and... That was going to come out sounding bad. Uh, so we are going to... Fee, just let me pick my preferred destination. Why are you not calibrated? Uh, we're gonna go to Temple Entrance, that's the best place to go, I believe. Correct me if I'm wrong, actually don't, because I will already have done all this. And why am I recording in widescreen? That's weird. The screen on my, I, I'm play, I play on my TV, but I also have another screen open, and... Uh, it's recording in widescreen for some reason, so if there's a change in the video quality, that's why. My apologies. This is the windmill propeller you were searching for. It is now possible to retrieve this using the robot whose services we have enlisted. Would you like me to call the robot? 
I will send word to the robot using telepathic transmission, Master. Mr. Sphi, I hope you weren't waiting long. <laughs> you want me to come <laughs> carry this? <laughs> hey, Master for Short Pants, you're in my way here, Zerped. I said get out of the way, Zerped. I'll be waiting for you up in the sky, so don't take too long, Zerped. Oh my gosh. Master, I suggest we also return to the sky and collect the propeller as soon as possible. So basically what I was saying is, apparently I'm recording in widescreen today. I, or m my recording's just messing up. My apologies, I did not notice that until now. I will try and have that fixed for the next video. But I digre I'm digressing. I apologize. But... I love Scrapper's theme. That is my favorite theme. Probably one of my favorite themes. And the most memorable, certainly. Other than possibly the music in this overworld. Even though the overworld's kind of disappointing. But I just, I love Scrapper's theme so much. It's, it's just so much. It's so fun. It kind of has that fun making that, uh, in sort of epicness, not quite as much on that grand of a scale, but in a way it reminds me of Gusty Garden Galaxy music, just kind of in the orchestration a little bit. Here's that windmill pr propeller. If you need me, clang. Feel free to call. For Mr. Sphi, I will travel to any destination. Whoa! Isn't that the beat up old robot from Gondo's place? Wait just a second. Is that. It is! It's a windmill propeller. That thing was supposed to have fallen down below the clouds. Are you saying the whole story handed down through Gondo's family was actually true? Hmm. Somehow, I get the feeling this is all some elaborate prank. But I guess I'll try and fix this thing. This goes in here, and I just crank that a few clicks. Phew! <laughs> That ought to do it. If you can find some way to spin the propeller, you can probably turn the windmill around. Hey! Honey! Honey! Oh no, I think I might promise my wife I'd fix our cupboard. I swear that woman's always looking for somebody. See you around, Link. I don't even... I was going to say something and I don't even... I don't even... So we're going to do the same thing with this windmill. Uh, one thing to note is that it's interesting that it was said that... Oh, I'll explain in a minute. It was said that this was supposed to be the oldest link of all the links. Yet, he's getting a ton of crap about being a child and his age and such. And I don't know if that was just a mistranslation telling us that this is the oldest Link. Or if that they're just trying to be funny. I'm not sure which. And the other thing I was going to say was the thing about Gusty Garden Galaxy that I was talking about from Super Mario Brothers. Or Super Mario Galaxy. What am I talking about? Uh, now that I think about it, it's not really that good of a comparison, but, like, it just invokes a similar feeling with me that I get when I feel Gusty Garden, or when I feel, when I hear <laughs> Gusty Garden Galaxy. It's just a similar feeling. But, I think that's all we're going to do for right now. In the next episode, we will find out what happens if we go up here. So... If you like this part, please subscribe, comment, or like, and I will see y'all later.